My parents, whoever they were, left me on the steps of an unfunded girl's home when I was just a baby. Let's just say my childhood was difficult. The people who found me named me Joy. You'd think I wouldn't have much to be joyful about, and I didn't, at least for a while. But then I found Joy. Or should I say it found me? I read the words of Jesus and he changed my life. Forgiven, loved, and now filled with hope, Jesus transformed me from the inside out. Bitterness, insecurity, fear, despair were all slowly replaced with their own opposites as I learned to trust it. The changes in my life were pretty dramatic, but then things got crazy. At a youth day service, Joy decided to help a man who seemed in need of immediate medical care and urged that he needs to get to the hospital. The man, however, responds that won't be necessary because he was an angel sent by God telling her, The Lord has a plan for you, Joy Barnes. He knew your compassion would draw you to me. He has sent me to give you a gift. No one else saw the angel, only a bright flash of light. As for the gift he mentioned, I couldn't discover what he meant until days later. One day while Joy and Jess were doing the garden chores, Jess accidentally cut a finger with a garden scissors. But when Joy grabbed her hands to see how badly Jess damaged her fingers, both her hands were set ablaze. But the fire didn't harm them. Instead, it miraculously healed Jess's hands. But now, Joy felt the pain in her hands. However, it felt like it just wanted to get out. Joy, not understanding what she felt, dispelled that feeling towards the ground. And as a result, she propelled it straight into the air. But rather than crashing back down to the ground, she discovered that she actually has the power of flight. Later that day, Joy and Jess discussed what might be the best course of action for Joy's newfound superpowers. Becoming a superhero was obviously on the list, to which Jess heavily recommended that Joy should join the Watchers, even offering to help create her costume. But when the day came for Jess to join the Watchers, she felt like something was off and had a bad feeling about her decision on joining the Watchers. As she hovered in the air, pondering what to do next, a massive portal opens above her with the heroes of the remnant emerging from it. I'd soon learn that these strangers, not the Watchers, were the real heroes. But they wouldn't be strangers for long. In fact, they were already my brothers and sisters in Christ. I'd finally found a family just as I grew too old for the only place I'd call home. A new heart, a new home, and a new life. That's my story so far, and I'd say God's given me plenty to make my name applicable. But actually, when in uniform, why don't you just call me Rapture? I haven't been at this hero thing for very long, and to be honest, I'm not very good at it. The last time I tried to help was tragic at best. Originally, I thought this was a divine calling, but lately, I'm thinking it's just a fool's errand. I do like the new suit and I look awesome in it, but this may be better for someone more up to the task. But that's a question for another day. I gotta get to work. However, on the way to work, he runs into Raytheon and Hellwing battling it out in the city, but the odds not going in Raytheon's favor. As Hellwing had seemingly slammed him so hard into the ground that he stopped breathing, Zap tried his best to just mind his business and continue on to work, not intervening. But after seeing Raytheon unconscious on the ground, he suits up and speeds over, giving Raytheon a little life shock. Instantly reviving him, but receiving a blast in return from Hellwing, who now has Evil 33 as his backup. But Raytheon is back for retribution, and with Zap as his backup, the four have an all-out brawl, with Raytheon and Zap coming out on top. As Raytheon rounds up Hellwing and Evil 33 to take them away, he thanks Zap for the assistance, who deflects stating that Raytheon did all the heavy lifting, who counters that claim by saying he couldn't have done it without him, and that every hero is needed for the front line. As a team working together, we can do great things, going on to invite Zap to join the Remnant. And we end this issue with Zap's origin story card. Before scientist Nikola Tesla died, he left a puzzle. The answer to that puzzle would unlock a technological mystery. I solved the puzzle and constructed a device from his specifications. 
This mesh suit can manipulate and weaponize electricity. I wasn't sure what to do with it, so I prayed. And as I was praying, I saw a news report of two ESPs fighting in Silas City. I knew my mission. I would use my suit to be a hero. My first attempt didn't go too well, but I found some friends to help train me and fight alongside with. Now, Zap is a force to be reckoned with. Now with that, let's put Parables of the Remnant issue 7 on our Christian Fiction Judgment Scale. For the story, I'll give it a solid 4 to 5. I really like both Raptures and Zap's origin stories, though I'm more a fan of a Raptures. I'm not much of a science guy, so I'm not too sure even in the context of fiction, obviously, if Zap's origin and source of power makes sense. But then again, I can't speak much about things making sense because I really like the story of the orphan girl gifted with the power to miraculously heal and transfer a person's pain to herself, then dispel that pain in the form of concentrated energy blasts that gives her the ability to fly. And that power was given to her by an angel. Huh. You know what? Let's move on to the next category which is artwork and creativity, and I'll give it a 5 out of 5 on our scale. While I must say that if I were to rate it solely on panel work comparing it comic to comic, it would fall more so on a 3.5 out of 5 in the comic to comic judging from panel to panel artwork when compared to other comics we covered on the channel, especially the Chunky Boy South Park. I, that I am, <laughs> I personally, I'm not too much of a fan of that particular design of South Hawk for that image, that um, panel. Everything else was solid, especially the remnant members who can fly or riding on hoverboards. I really, really like that panel other than Chunky Boy South Hawk. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't like that too much. <laughs> but the creativity aspect of the backstories was intriguing. Rapture's powers in particular is a really cool concept of someone with the gift of healing who can heal most conditions and wounds but in the process feels their pain. It's something that stands out at least to me. Maybe such a power is quite common within um, like anime and stuff. I don't watch much anime so I don't know if that's a common superpower in anime but in the superhero media genre even with when it comes to stuff like mutants and um, the DC world and the Marvel world, which I am much, much more familiar with, I haven't really seen a power like that. And this was the first power in the Remnant for a while that had me go, oh wait, that is actually pretty cool. And I also really like the suit designs of both Rapture and Zap. When it comes to theological basis, which refers to how well Christian principles, theology, and scripture is adapted into a piece of Christian fictional work, I'll give it a 5 out of 5. Both heroes credit their drive to become a hero directly to God's plan for their life, which is a nice touch in my opinion. I mean, Rapture got her powers from an angel, and I like how they work in Hebrews 13 verse 2 into it, which says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Whenever I see angels given powers in fiction, I'm not gonna lie, I am always quite skeptical, as it is something that could go south quite quickly and venture into rewriting scripture territory for the sake of creative liberty. In non-Christian centered fictional media, it always is some point of uh, contention. His dark materials is a big one, but then again, that's anti-Christian. But angels and that is like, whew. But Rapture's origin, for me, it did sit well with me and it doesn't fall into the Galatians 1 verse 8 category. So because of that, for me personally, 5 out of 5 is appropriate for this issue when it comes to theological basis. Lastly, my enjoyment and how likely I am to recommend it is a 5 out of 5. I really like this issue and it is one of the Redman issues that I would recommend to someone if they just wanted to pick from five remnant comics it isn't necessarily in my top five 
comics from the Rundown, but it's in my list of five comics I would just hand to someone if they want to get into the Remnant or individual stories from the Remnant that are really digestible and a good read. And this is one of them. Even though I did read a lot of the monologue aspects, I do recommend that you check it out for yourself as I skipped over and oversimplified the dialogue, which I enjoyed a lot while reading this comic for review. So do be sure to check it out on your own and make your own decisions if you liked what you heard. Overall, Parables of the Remnant Issue 7 gets a 4.75 out of 5 from Blexplanations. Let me know what you think of the comic based on what was discussed in the comments below. Do you agree with me or do you have a different take than I do? Link to purchase the comic will be in the description. If you enjoyed the video, then why not consider leaving a like on it and subscribing for more reviews and coverage of comics made by professing believers. If you enjoyed the video to the point you want to check out another one on the channel, then be sure to click the card at the top right hand corner of the screen to check out our other The Revenant reviews or check out this video about the time another superhero had an encounter with an angel but this angel wiped a man off the face of the earth right in front of this superhero, quoted a Bible scripture, and then returned to heaven through a portal.